Now, God, with our lips, we say yes. With our minds, we say yes. With our hearts, we say yes. Now, God, from the depths of our souls, summon forth our yes. That we withhold nothing from you, but that we could give it all to you, God. And that even as we gather in this sanctuary, we might be kissed by the presence of your spirit. And that when all of our worship in this place is done, we will leave God better than we did when we came. So open us up now, God, to your word and speak to us. Saturate the sanctuary, God, and feel us. Disturb us, God, and deliver us from places of silent suffering, quiet complacency. And bring us, God, into the bountifulness of blessing your name. In Jesus' name and for his sake and his glory, we do pray. And all the people of God did say, amen. Let me acknowledge the presence of Reverend Warren. Uh, Smith, God bless you. Good to see you again. Amen. And Sister Tammy, uh, I had to lean over to Reverend Simpkins. She said, you remember Tammy? She was with us in the hospital room that night. I said, her hair is different. And that's what she said. She said, always. Amen. So it's good to see this other version of you. Amen. We praise God for your presence as well. Um. You all have the page. Now, I've been here for 17 years, and I ask that same question every Pentecost Sunday. Because after 17 years, I just assume that y'all know why I'm preaching on Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Amen. The book of Acts chapter number 2 calls our attention today. As we seek to uh, conclude this May series, How's Your Love Life? Amen. We, we, we started the series in part one asking, how do I know it's love? Looking at John 3.16. And then in part two, we, we raised and answered the question, do you love me? In Roman, I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And then last week, we flipped the question, do I love you? Also in Romans, also in 1 Corinthians, rather, uh, chapter 13. And now today to conclude the series of How's Your Love Life, I want to go to the traditional text on Pentecost Sunday, Acts uh, chapter 2. It's a rather familiar story to many of us, if not all of us. And so uh, I'll read around and see. Uh, where God would have us to go. Uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse number 1, the word of God says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then down at the end of the chapter, verse 46 says, so continuing, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And the Lord was adding to the church daily those 
who were being saved. I'm not phrasing this as a question on today. Simply want to tag the text and share from this subject, God's love language. Amen. After how do I know it's love and do you love me and do I love you? I want to tag this text today, God's love language. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, if I'm honest with myself, this one message could actually be a series of messages which the Lord may lead me to in time and years to come. But today, I want to try to condense it and just look at God's love language. In 1992, the same year that I was graduating from eighth grade, Gary Chapman, a professional marriage counselor, published a book titled The Five Love Languages. I don't think it was a major hit when it first dropped over 30 years ago, but I do know that in the last 15 years, it is the number one book I hear people talk about when it comes to love and relationships. Behind the Bible, they talk about Gary Chapman's five love languages. And even if people have never read the book or don't even know that it was a book, people often talk about the five love languages. Love languages, according to Chapman, are the ways in which persons in relationships express and experience love. And while the first implications and applications of the five love languages was to married couples, over the years, their implications and applications have come to be relevant in all of our human relationships. Parents and children, children and their parents, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, between siblings and even between strangers, between cousins or co-workers or any communal coupling or configuration. Chapman suggests that we all experience love or express love using one of the five love languages. And the five languages, for those of you who need them, language one is quality time or physical touch. Then there's words of affirmation giving or receiving gifts and acts of service. Again, quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, giving or receiving gifts or acts of service. And while all of these are ways to express love, Chapman suggests that all of us have a preference. Some of us prefer quality time. We give love or receive love by being all booed up. We are clingy to show that we care or when you are clingy towards us, we know that you care. Having meaningful conversations, going on dates, being present and being together is quality time because we express or experience love through quality time. Others of us prefer physical touch. We we give love or receive love through physical contact, holding hands, hugging, high-fiving, fist bumping when you're just being friendly, but up to putting a ring on it, cuddling, Netflixing and chilling when you are needing the touch mandated in matrimony because some of us experience love and express love through physical touch. But then number three, some of us prefer words of affirmation. We give love and we want to receive love through words of affirmation. We want the compliments, the encouragement, the kudos, the congratulations, be it spoken or through text. Those of us who express or experience love through words of affirmation, give it and receive 
receive love through words and still others of us prefer giving or receiving gifts. And that's how we experience or express love. For them, love means buying me something or bringing me something. And people who prefer to be loved expressing through gifts are not necessarily gold diggers, but I am saying they ain't messing with no broke ninjas either. If you prefer giving or receiving love through gifts, you are either financially fit or you enjoy making things with your hands that you give as gifts because you express and experience love through giving and receiving of gifts. But some of us don't want your gift. We, ex we prefer to express and experience love through acts of service, doing the mundane chores around the house, assisting and accomplishing an assignment, helping me to do the things that are on my to-do list. Because those of us who express and experience love through acts of service, that's the way to tell us that you love us. So to recap, those are the five love languages that Chapman talks about quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, giving or receiving gifts, and acts of service. And in order for me to feel the love that you claim that you are giving me, then you've got to give me the love in the language that I understand. And in order for you to feel the love that I claim to be giving you, I've got to give it to you in a language that you understand too. Because sometimes you may be giving me love in a way that I cannot receive it. And sometimes I may be giving you love in a way that you can't receive it either. You've been giving me quality time and words of affirmation and acts of service trying to express your love to me. But if my love language is physical touch, then I'm not feeling your love because ain't no touching going on. And at the same time, I can be offering you some physical touch and quality time and acts of service. But if your love language is gifts, then you aren't feeling the love that I'm giving you either. And now we just sit around and call each other ungrateful. Now we walk around tense and tight with attitudes at each other because we are not giving love in the way that the other person can receive love. And that gets me to wondering whether or not God has a preferred love language. Does God have a preferred way that God wants us to express our love towards him? Does God have a preferred way of expressing God's love towards us? And it could be that there are times when we are not experiencing God's love the way we want to experience God's love because we are not speaking God's love language. And what is God's love language? I'm glad you asked. God has a love language. I'm trying to help somebody today who is not experiencing or expressing what you need. Is there anybody up in here or out there? Have you ever been trying to get close to God, but nothing you tried seemed to work? Have you ever been speaking the words of affirmation, but it seemed Seems like God is not getting the message. Have you ever been doing the acts of service, but it feels like God is not moved by them? You've been giving your gifts, but you don't seem to be receiving God's presence. You've been doing the same stuff that you've seen other people do, and yet you are not getting what you see other people get. Am I preaching yet to anybody up in here? Because 
because I've come to preach today to some folk who claim to love God, but you have not been feeling God's love for you. And you've been going through the motions of acting filled when in fact you are empty. You've been going through the motions of acting loved when you feel like God has left you alone. And I want to tell you that if you start speaking God's love language, you can experience God's love the way that you want and to experience God's love. You can move from a show to some real substance. You can move from wanting it to walking in it. You, you can experience a restored relationship that makes you rejoice. You can experience it all. You can have it all. You can do it all when you communicate with God by speaking God's love language. And the traditional lectionary text of Pentecost Sunday helps us on today. Acts chapter 2, it helps us, it helps us. Because in Acts chapter 2, we witness an outpouring of God's Spirit. And the outpouring of God's Spirit is synonymous with the outpouring of God's love. As good Methodists, this is what we call the second blessing. See, the first blessing is the gift of salvation where we confess our love to God. But the second blessing is God giving us God's spirit to seal us, to sanctify us, and to confirm that God does love us. I got to point that out every chance I get because a whole lot of folk think that Pentecost Sunday is a Pentecostal holiday. But even before the Pentecostals existed, it was the Methodists who knew the secret of sanctification being the sealing of God's Holy Ghost. And God pouring out God's Spirit is God pouring out God's love. God manifests God's love in the text to those who speak God's love language. And if your love life with God has lost its fire, there are three movements we see in Acts chapter 2 which tell us how to spark the fire, how to bask in the glow of the fire, and how to keep the fire going. And the way to spark the fire, bask in the fire, and keep the fire going is to speak God's love language. Which, in other words, beloved, you've got to give the desired input if you want to get the desired output. Man, I'm preaching already. I say you got to give the desired input if you want to get the desired output. And I'm not just talking about God. I'm talking about in your home, on your job, and in every relationship that you may have. You have got to give the desired input in order to get the desired output. And in the text on today, the text tells us what we must input to get the desired output. So if your love life with the Lord is losing its flame or has lost its flame, Acts chapter 2 tells us, first of all, that to spark the fire of God's love, you've got to speak the love language of quality time. That's the first lesson I want to leave with you. That's the first key to unlock locking new levels in your love life. That if you want to spark the fire of God's love, you got to speak the love language of quality time. For the events of Acts chapter 2 take place 50 days after Jesus was resurrected from the grave. And for the first 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus showed himself alive by what Luke calls many infallible proofs. Then on the 40th day, the disciples watched as Jesus stepped into a cloud and ascended up to the heavens. But they were instructed by an angel to wait in Jerusalem until they received the promise of God's power. And in Acts chapter 2, 
as the chapter opens. This is the 10th day of their waiting. And in the 10 days they've been waiting, they weren't just wasting time. They were spending some quality time. Yeah, they were waiting with other followers of Jesus who were waiting for the promise too. That's quality time. They were praying round the clock. That's quality time. They were filling the gaps in their ministry by electing Matthias to take the place of Judas. That's quality time. They were taking care of God's business. Quality time. They were on one accord. The Greek says together in one place. That's quality time. They weren't taking any breaks. They were not hit and missed. They were not here today and gone tomorrow. They were not impatient, not following their own schedule, not doing things their way, but doing things God's way. They were intentional about spending quality time. Listen, my friends, when you want to experience the love of people in your life, you make some time for quality time. It's not good enough to say that we're all under the same roof. That's spending time. No, we got to be in the same room. That's quality time. It's not enough to say, well, we're in the same room. No, that's spending time. We need to eat together. That's quality time. It's not enough to say, well, we're at the same table eating together. No, that's just spending time. We got to put the phones away and turn off the television. That is quality time. We're going to talk together. That's quality time. We're going to engage each other. That's quality time. You know how to do quality time with people, but if you really want to work on your love life and spark the fire of God, you got to speak the language of quality time. Quality time with God looks like reading and studying God's word to know God intimately. Quality time with God means praying regularly to know God personally. Quality time with God means fasting to learn God fervently. Quality time with God means fellowshipping with other believers to experience God communally. Quality time with God looks like worshiping to express yourself to God passionately. Spending quality time with God is the love language that sparks the fire of God's love. And I'm not making that up today. I'm reading it in the text because the text says that when they were together and when they were consistent and when they were persistent in spending quality time with God that suddenly there came a sound from the heavens. The Greek word that is used here for suddenly, I like it. It's the word "afno." Afno means unexpectedly or without warning. Afno means out of nowhere or from everywhere. I like that. I like the word "afno" because "afno" means that when God shows up out of nowhere, His presence is felt everywhere. And when they spent quality time with the Lord in God's presence, then God showed up from nowhere, but his presence was felt everywhere. And not only does God show up suddenly, I know, but the text goes on to say that he showed up as a rushing mighty wind. The Greek word that is used for rushing is the word inekko. Inekko means to carry or to bear, to drive or to uphold. And the Greek word for mighty is the word bios. Bios means violent. Therefore, in the Greek, the text says that when the followers of Jesus spent 10 days in quality time, that God, Afno, Igneko, Biahos, God showed up fully and God showed up forcefully. God showed up passionately and God showed up purposefully. That God showed up presently and God showed up 
powerfully. They were spending quality time with God and God just could not hold God's self any longer. That God could not restrain God's love. In other words, y'all, they were spending quality time when all of a sudden God was all over them. I think somebody can relate to this in another situation. They were spending quality time when all of a sudden God was all over them. And if you want God to be all over you too, you got to invest in some quality time with God. If you want God to live in you, you got to invest quality time with God. If you want God to surround you, you got to invest quality time with God. If you want God's love to overwhelm you, you got to invest quality time with God. If the thrill is cold and you want to spark God's flame, learn how to spend quality time and the spark of God's fire will ignite. The text says, the text tells us in the first move, in the first move of the text, the text says that if you're trying to spark the fire of God's love, speak the language of quality time. But then the text moves. And in the second movement of the text, the text says that once the fire is sparked to bask in the glow, you got to speak the languages of physical touch and words of affirmation. I'm, I'm going to help y'all with this. If, if you, once the spark has ignited the fire, if you want to bask in the glow that's coming from the flame of God's love, you got to speak the love languages of physical touch and words of affirmation. And I'm not making that up today. The text says that, that, that when they, that, that because they were spending so much quality time with God that God took the encounter to a whole new level. There appeared to them tongues like fire. And the text says that the tongues sat that, that means touch. The tongues sat on each of them. Everybody got touched. And sometimes a touch is all that it takes. I wish I had a witness up in here. Again, my friends, we know what it means in our human relationships that all it takes sometimes is a touch. Sometimes all it takes is a hug. That's a touch and it makes us feel better. Sometimes all it takes is holding hands. That's a touch and it makes us feel safe. Sometimes all all it takes is brushing our hair or scratching our scalp with the comb and all that's a touch that makes us feel cared for. Sometimes all it takes is a high five and all of a sudden the touch makes us feel encouraged and if you know how to touch, how to touch is a love language in your human relationship, then the text is teaching us that touch is a love language to God. That's why whenever we come into the house of God, we got to touch something. Have you ever gone to court and you had to testify? What did they do? They held that Bible in front of your face and said, touch the Bible and raise your right hand. There's something about a touch that makes you feel like you're being honest. And when I come into the house of God and I get ready to preach, I may not use my Bible, but I got to touch my phone when I open my Bible app. And there's something about the touch that I can feel the presence of God. I hold the microphone in my hand because there's something that happens that when I touch the microphone, I can feel God touching me. When Javante sits on the organ and plays the keys, I'm sure that when he touches the keys, the Spirit of God God touches him. When Patty grabs the sticks, touching the sticks, lets God touch him. When Makai is on keyboard, touching the board, opens up God to touching him. Well, you're not a musician. Fine. Whenever you get good in church and start to feel the presence of God, you got to touch the pew that's in front of you. Ain't nobody bothering you, but you touch the pew, Sister Stafford, and you start to rock. Have you ever 
have uh, just been in church and church has been so good that you start waving your hands, touching the air because there's something about when God starts moving, I don't want the Lord to pass me by. And so I'm doing this to touch him. I'm doing this to touch him. I'm doing this to touch him because I understand and recognize what Lucille Campbell said, touch, touch me, Lord Jesus, with the hand of mercy. Make each throbbing heartbeat feel thy power divine. Oh, take my will forever. I will doubt thee never. Oh, please, Lord, cleanse me, my dear Savior, and make me holy thine. Now, that may be too old school for some of you. A newer school is Brian Courtney Wilson saying, all I need is a touch from you that nobody else can touch my heart like you do. Take the wrong in my life and make it right because all I need is a touch from you. If you're trying to speak the love language of God, then once the fire is sparked, you've got to exercise the language of touch and the language of words of affirmation because there's nothing like a touch to make you say something. When I touch God and I feel God touching me, it makes me say something. In the word of God, Acts chapter 2 says that when the tongues touch the men who were in the room, that that they began to speak and open their mouths. Uh, they were speaking Arsaki and Palavi because there were Parthenians in the room. They were speaking Medic because there were Medes in the room. They were speaking Hatatamtite because there were Elamites in the room. They were speaking Akkadian because Mesopotamians were in the room. They were speaking Cappadocian Greek and they spoke Portus Greek because there were Cappadocians in the room. They began to speak the various languages of Asia because there were Asians in the room. They spoke some Phrygian because Phrygians were in the room. They spoke some Egyptian because Egyptians were in the room. And as they were speaking, everybody heard what they were saying in their own language. But they were not giving the highlights or the scores from the game on yesterday. They were not reading announcements about who grabbed graduated and who passed to the next level, but they opened their mouths and started to speak the word says about the wonderful works of God. And when God touches you and the fire is sparked, you open your mouth and you start talking about the Lord. Is there anybody here who can understand what I'm saying? All you did was open your mouth and all of a sudden a hallelujah came flying out. All you did was open your mouth and a thank you Jesus fell from your lips. All you did was open your mouth and glory dripped from your tongue. All you did was open your mouth and praise began to show itself forth because when the fire of God's love is sparked in your presence, you cannot help but open your mouth and give God a praise. You become like Jeremiah who said I made up my mind that I wasn't going to tell it and speak his name anymore. But I opened my mouth because something like a fire felt like it was shut up in my bones. And when the fire falls and the spark turns into a flame, if you want to bask in the glow of God's presence, then you've got to learn how to open your mouth and speak the words of affirmation after you get Get a touch from the Lord. But then the third thing, I'm actually almost done. The third thing that the text teaches us in the third movement of Acts chapter 2, the third movement of Acts chapter 2 says to us that we've sparked a fire and we bask in the glow of the flame. But now to keep the fire going, you got to speak the love languages of gifts and acts of service. Gifts and acts of service. Gifts and acts of service. When you date somebody early on, you always bring gifts. 
and do acts of service. But the text says that once the spark is ignited and it becomes a flaming fire to keep the fire going, you've got to speak the love language of gifts and acts of service. And I'm not making this up on today because after Peter finished preaching later on in the same second chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible says that all the folk heard it and they came and gave their lives to Christ. There were 3,000 who were added to the church on that day. But then to further demonstrate and experience God's love, it says that the apostles, the disciples, and all those who were followers of Jesus, they began speaking the love language of gifts and acts of service. But the text says they went and they got all of their stuff. Everything they had in the houses, they brought it to the upper room and laid it at the apostles' feet. In other words, they brought a gift. Not only did they bring the gift, they engaged in acts of service because there were those in the room who had less and others who had nothing. So they divided up the gifts that people bought to the room and distributed them to everyone according to everyone's need. And because they engaged in uh, the love languages of gifts and uh, acts of service, uh, the Bible says that the Lord uh, was with them daily. They continued daily in sharing bread from house to house. They continued daily in their worshiping God in the temple. They continued daily speaking the love languages of God. And because they continued speaking the language, then the Lord kept adding to the church daily those who were being saved. Because the word of God is trying to tell us that it's not enough just to spark the fire. And it's not enough to bask in the glow of the fire. But if you want your love life with the Lord to stay hot and full of passion, you got to keep the fire going by bringing God your gifts and engaging in acts of godly service. Well, that began to challenge me on today because I began to say to the word of God, well, I want to know what is God's preferred love language. I said that all of us have a preference, that we prefer acts of service. We prefer words of affirmation. We prefer gifts. Or we prefer quality time. What is the language that is preferred by God? I began to wrestle even with my own self, asking myself, am I giving God what God truly desires for me? I began to challenge myself and say, self, I want to speak God's love language. I know my wife's love language. I know my daughter's love language. I want to know the language that appeals to my God. And somewhere yesterday afternoon, the Spirit spoke to me like you can hear me speak to you right now. I say, Spirit, what's God's love language? I need to know one of them. Spirit said, it ain't one of them. I said, Spirit will tell me both of them. Spirit said, boy, it ain't both of them. I said, spirit will tell me some of them. Spirit said, son, it ain't some of them. I said, spirit, tell me a couple of them. Spirit said, child, it ain't a couple of them. Said, spirit, if it ain't one of them, and if it ain't both of them, and if it ain't some of them, and if it ain't 
couple of them, uh, bloody is God's love language. Uh, Spirit said, it's all of them. It's all of them because God is multilingual. It's all of them because when God speaks love to you, he does it through words of affirmation. He shows you love through quality time. He shows you love through gifts. He shows you love through acts of service. He shows you love in any way you can imagine. And if God loves you through all, then God wants your love through all of them. It does not matter if you're trying to spark the fire. It does not matter if you're trying to bask in the glow of the fire. It does not matter if you're trying to keep the fire going. God don't want one. God doesn't want both. God doesn't want some. God doesn't want a couple. But God wants it all. So I hear the songwriter say, I give myself. I give myself. I give myself away. So you can you see, is there anybody here who needs to spark your love life? You ought to say, I give myself. So you can you use me. Is there anybody here that's been touched by the Lord? You ought to lift your voice. Say, Lord, here am I. I give myself away. So you can come on and use me. Is there anybody here? Been with the Lord a long time, trying to keep the fire going. Lord, I give myself away, my good and my bad, my ups and my downs, my gifts and my talents, my words of affirmation. I give myself. My all, I give it to you. Well, you're still not getting it. Let me go him school on you. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender to him. I freely give. I will forever love and trust him. And in his presence, daily live. I Surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I give you my all. What's your love life? God wants your own. He who did not even withhold his only son from you, God wants your all. God's love language. The language of all. Chapman can separate them. But God does not separate. God does not want your son. God wants your all. Many times we are not at the level of love and experiencing God. At the level we so desire because we keep trying to give God some when God wants all. See, some people will settle for your son. God won't settle for your son because God didn't give you some. God gave you all. God didn't bless you today and walk away. God didn't leave a blessing on the nightstand, put his clothes on and go back home. 
God gave you all. Here it is, you've been trying to search for somebody to put a ring on it. God has already put God's blood on it. God gave you God's all. That's why God won't settle for your son. God says, I want you to love me the same way I love you. I don't want to be your Sunday morning weekend lover. I want you all 24-7. I don't want to be your one night stand. I want you in the morning, in the noon day, and even all night long. God says, I don't have to wait till the midnight hour when my love come tumbling down. I'm loving you 24 hours a day, and I want you to love me the same way. Maybe if you start speaking God's love language, you'll find new levels in your love life. My mentor in ministry one day said something to me that I did not understand the day he said it. He said to me that a person who cannot fully express themselves to God, give themselves fully to God, will never be able to fully express themselves and give themselves to you, to anybody else for that matter. I didn't understand it when he said it. But the longer I have lived, the more I understand his statement. Because you know what? Folk who don't know how to tell all their secrets to the Lord don't even know how to talk to you because they can't trust you. Folk who can't trust God to keep God's word don't trust you to keep your word either. People who don't know how to express what they feel, what they really feel to the Lord, they can't tell you how they feel either. If you really learn how to give it all to God, God knows that you and can handle all of you. If you really learn how to give it all to God, he loved you at your worst. If you really learn how to give it all to God, your tears and your ugly cries, learn to give it all to God. That's God's language. And you'll discover God giving more and more and more of God's all to you. Listen, listen, and so, come on, Jay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Right now, somebody just needs to give it all. On this day, in this place, you need to give it all. You've been burdened with the weight. You need to give it all. You've been troubled by a trauma. You need to give it all. You've been heartbroken. You've been hurt. But you still need to give it all. God cannot use it until you give it. God can't fix it until you give it. God cannot heal it until you give it. The doors of the church are open today. For somebody who just needs to give. You need to give. You need to give. You need to give yourself. All of you. You need to give it to God today. Give myself away. So you. That's what the disciples were doing in Acts chapter 2. They were giving all of themselves away. away. And when they gave themselves away, God used them to turn the world upside down. If you need a change and a turnaround in your life, in your house, in your family, on your job, 
with your friends or your foes. If you need it today, you got to give yourself, all of you, to the Lord who loves you. I give myself away. The doors are open today. The doors are open today. The doors are open and the altar is open. The altar is open too. I give Somebody myself you come to the altar away. And give something to God. So God, here's a problem. I'm coming to give it to you. God, here's my issue. I'm coming to give it to you. God, here's my struggle. I'm coming to give it to you. God, here's the way. I'm coming to give it to you. I give myself yes, God, I'm giving it to you. So you can you I can, I can, I can, I can. I give myself away. You can send me away no time to take it. God ain't gonna take it until you give it. I give myself away. God, just snatch it from you. No, I just snatch it from you. Can you lose me? I give all of me. All of me, all of me. I give all of me. All of me, Lord. I give all of me. I give you all of me, Lord. I give all of me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Everything, everything, everything. I give you all. I give you all. Thank you, God. 